noon, closed then Thursday afternoon and Friday. But if you, uh, you might want to just check because Jan is taking some time off and if I happen to leave or something, you may or may not find somebody. So if you want to make sure the office is open, call before you come, but we are around. And if anybody's around tomorrow afternoon and wants to help, we're just taking down the luminaries that we had up inside on Christmas Eve. It's not going to take us very long, it doesn't look like. Um, but if you want to help between one and three tomorrow, that would be great. Next Sunday, we're going to go back to our normal pandemic worship service, 8.30 Facebook Live, 10 o'clock Zoom. Stay tuned uh, for when we're going to be ready to um, start it in person. Again, the numbers are looking good. The schools are making plans, and so we need to make plans too. I am hopeful. The newsletter will be coming out and uh, the other only other option or only other announcement I had was um, Helen Caparell passed away on Christmas night. She's the 830 worshipers will remember and know Helen. She's been declining for several months. It lives at Oak Terrace and uh, is the sister of Cheech Middleton. So please keep Cheech and Jim in your prayers as well. And uh, they always they both need to be on our prayer list and don't like it to be on our prayer list but they say I can tell people so please keep the Middletons in your prayers for a number of reasons okay I'm going to turn this over to Pastor Janet and uh, we will start with our worship if you haven't gotten it yet feel free to come on up we've got a bulletin so you can follow along and communion elements this is informal so just come up if you haven't had a chance <laughs> Good morning. Merry Christmas. It's really me. <laughs> All right. Let us begin in prayer. Holy One, we thank you for the glimpses we have caught throughout the season of Advent and Christmas of your gifts of hope, love, joy, and peace. Even in the midst of fear, of challenge, of struggle, even when we have not been sure of tomorrow, you have ignited the light within us and we have glowed from its brilliance from the inside out. I believe in the sun, even when it's shining. I believe in love, even when I don't feel it. I believe in God, even when God is silent. I believe in the light that has come and is coming. Help us, help us continue to proclaim far and wide that the time has come for light to be among all people. Amen.
The Gospel is from Luke chapter 2, verses 22 to 40. When the time came for their ritual cleansing, in accordance with the law from Moses, they brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. It is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male will be dedicated to the Lord. They offered a sacrifice in keeping with what's stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of two turtle doves or two young pigeons. A man named Simeon was in Jerusalem. He was righteous and devout. He eagerly anticipated the restoration of Israel and the Holy Spirit rested on him. The Holy Spirit revealed to him that he wouldn't die before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Led by the Spirit, he went into the temple area. Meanwhile, Jesus' parents brought the child to the temple so they could do what was customary under the law. Simeon took Jesus in his arms and praised God. He said, Now, Master, let your servant go in peace according to your word, because my eyes have seen your salvation. You prepared this salvation in the presence of all peoples. It's a light for revelation to the Gentiles and a glory for your people, Israel. His father and mother were amazed by what was said about him. Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, this boy is a sign to be the cause of the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that generates opposition so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed and a sword will pierce your innermost being too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, who belonged to the tribe of Asher. She was very old. After she married, she lived with her husband for seven years. She was now an 84 year old widow. She never left the temple area but worshiped God with fasting and prayer day and night. She approached at that very moment and began to praise God and to speak about Jesus to everyone who was looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. When Mary and Joseph had completed everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to their hometown, Nazareth in Galilee. The child grew up and became strong he was filled with wisdom, and God's favor was on him. The Gospel of the Lord. reading by Howard Thurman. I will light candles this Christmas, candles of joy despite all the sadness, candles of hope where despair keeps watch, candles of courage for fears ever present, candles of peace for tempest-tossed days, candles of grace to ease heavy burdens, Candles of love to inspire all my living. Candles that will burn all year long.
If you uh, didn't get a chance to come up and get communion elements, you are invited to do so still at this time. Let us, though, together celebrate. We are reminded how Christmas um, is a time when we recognize and remember that God is with us, that God came to be with us in the form of a teeny tiny baby a long time ago. And that teeny tiny vulnerable baby, of course, we know grew up and uh, ministered for three or so years throughout Galilee and eventually died on the cross. As part of that time, the crucifixion that led to the resurrection, we are reminded how Jesus spent that last supper with his disciples and how he said on that night, uh, this is my body. On the night in which he was betrayed, Jesus, oh, it's, God, you know, my like having a brain, you know what? <laughs> on the night in which he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, broke it, and gave thanks, gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body. It is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks. And he gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so in that way, we know every time we share Holy Communion together, whether we are together like we are now or together in our homes, God is again with us. God is present in the bread and the wine and has come to us to remind us once again how he is always with us. As we remember that, let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. I invite you at this time to take that bread and wine, to uh, eat and drink, knowing this is the body and blood of Christ given and shed for you. I'm going to pull out my garbage can in the back. And um, I invite you as well to uh, share the peace with one another. If you're out or not through your car windows, however you might want to do that, let us also share Christmas peace. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and give you peace, love, and hope now and forever. Amen. Amen. Okay, we're going to continue one last, almost one last carol with joy to the world.
and receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy, and the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we're going to sing, We Wish You a Merry Christmas to close us out here.